Let's have a look at some VCR mechanisms. First, this one here is from a very old front loading machine, which I think is made by Sharp VHS. And very weird a door there that opens upwards. This is very unusual because it's got a belt driven video head, which is something you don't see very often. Only very early machines had that. And it's also the head looks like it's made of brass or something like that. It's also the capstan is belt driven by this motor. There's a lot of solenoids on there for the pinch roller. All the usual things, a race head, rollers, these tape guides, the back tension band, idler thingies for controlling which reels are moving, rollers, all guides, audio control head, capstan and pinch roller. This thing here is for opening the cassette flap. It will push on there and in that little bit there when the cassette's lowering onto it. So that's the capstan motor, but that also does probably the take up. But then the loading motor here, which operates these loading ring gears, also engages on this, which looks like it can be used for rewind or fast forward. It might be rewind. Depending on what these two solenoids here are doing, when this one engages, various actions will be taken. Very interesting and unusual. It's got it's made in two halves there. Just steel, not cast chassis. Looks like they're also using it as a heatsink there for a bunch of regulator type things. Probably a good idea because it will keep this slightly warm, which will prevent condensation forming. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Since we've got nearly 20 to go through. Here's a JVC SVHS mechanism. You can see it's got the little switch there for detecting uh, SVHS tape. There'll be a small hole in those which that will poke into. Very JVC looking mechanical. Again a solenoid for the pinch roller like the previous one all the usual bits and pieces. In this case there's no idler to drive the reels. It's They have their own motors and they're direct driven. The back tension lever there it uses this kind of servo... what do you call that? A re, what would that thing be called? Kind of like a resolver where it has two coils and depending on how far it's pressed it will change something. Can't remember what that sort of thing's called. These mechanisms have a lot of issues with these switches. There's two micro switches there that it uses to determine whether it's loaded or unloaded, and this belt would slip slightly and not quite be able to push the switch in time. Spend a lot of time battling with that on these machines. So direct drive caps down for DC motor. Same with the head, like you expect from modern things. Now there was another solenoid, I think it was on there, but I took that out to use for something else. Interesting mechanism. One final thing to note, you can see the extra heads on there for the hi-fi audio. I don't think this one had flying erase, not sure about that. This one here, I think this came from B and O machine, Bang and Olfsen. I think it was subcontracted out to Hitachi. These machines, you usually find the capacitors on this motor are wrecked because they were surface mount and those have been replaced there. But I'm pretty sure this still doesn't work, which is why it is being scrapped. Quite a compact mechanism there. Loading motor up here, which um, maybe not something. One of those, maybe it's the capstan motor, drives the the cassette loading mechanism too through a gear there. 
which is picked up here and it looks like it's done through the capstan that's cunning and probably means that now this has been taken off this will have to be re-timed to put it back possibly that's a common issue if you pull something out then the timing gets lost some sliding mechanisms there based off this loading so the machine it came out of was a disaster unfortunately it's got is this the right stuff I think so yes what it has is one of those early version plated through boards with the little green looking through holes but you can see in a lot of places there's this marks and what that is is the juice that's leaked out of the electrolytic capacitors and it's flowed through holes in the board and it's just corroding everything so the machine is completely wrecked unfortunately so there'll be capacitors just leaking all over it all these little electrolytics putting gross juice everywhere this machine was extremely complicated it has a lot of stuff in it and it has a lot of bodges there's these extra boards do stuff presumably i don't know just random extra boards added in that look like they were afterthoughts that's another one with this and there's another one that thing brings two independent circuits in and the wires from that are all tacked on to things and another one here cvs composite video in and out and then hq not hq no. anyway backup battery has the front panel very stylish front panel with all those glowing red and you can't see any of it when they're not illuminated but unfortunately everything's wrecked by the leaking capacitors i have got another one of these machines that does sort of work but i'm guessing the same thing is happening to it the capacitors have gone bad yeah bang and off some vcr here we have an interesting mechanism this is a mitsubishi from a portable VCR even though it's quite big and unwieldy so it's a pop-up loading which when it's mounted in the machine this is up like that which you can see by which way around the counter goes tape counter so it goes this way and opens out for loading trigger that somehow like that This is very strange because it has a plastic chassis, maybe to keep the weight down. Oh, that belt's wrecked. Uh, so direct drive or DC motors for the reels, cap stand with a DC brushless motor, and strangely the head is driven by a motor on the top, and the driver for that is there. So the take-up reel is geared there, so it's not quite direct drive, whereas the feed is directly driven interesting thing the motor driver there got that heatsink coming out of heatsink tabs coming out of that dip package that's quite interesting it has a photo interrupter sensor thing around the pinch roller there so it's a bit weird so that so that you can tell that the pinch roller's gone out protruded not sure what drives that. Presumably it's part of the loading mechanism that's slightly visible. That white gear I think is all rotates around. Oh it's two concentric gears that rotate around in there. This machine also has the problem of all the capacitors going bad. You can see there's corrosion in there. It also has some rechargeable batteries in it which really leaked everywhere as well so yeah very good moving away from vhs we've got here a a better cam sp portable machine it's 
So it takes the tapes like this, bit of ASP, and that's a pop-up loading. Not sure how to trigger that one. Be a little lever somewhere that you can use to open it up. And it's a little bit taken to bits already. So this machine, there's a lot of stuff going on on the video head. It's got some slip ring um, there to presumably get power onto this electronics. So perhaps that's the, there are amplifiers on there. So the signal coming off the head is at a higher level. Interesting heads. Interesting also there's some sort of stationary head there. Not sure what that's about. Standard audio heads are there, I think. Oh, there's some heads there. There's more down there. Maybe those are the audio. Is it? Uh, maybe this has confidence heads. Possible? So that you can play back what's being recorded. Maybe. Some of the professional machines have that. They have two sets of heads. Video and audio heads. So that uh, what you see on the video output of the machine is being played back from the tape at the same time that the input signal is being recorded to the tape and be sure that it has recorded correctly and you can see immediately if something is going wrong good for mission critical stuff confidence heads so the arrangement of this one is fairly complex flexible PCB which goes all the way through the mechanism and joins onto various things and then there's all sorts of other boards that were connected up to this and then a whole bunch of wires that went off to things that's some of the signals coming out of the head I think that's more of yeah all that stuff there comes out of the head drum so there's quite a lot of it probably is record and play at the same time and that might be a flying erase thing, maybe. Or well, that could be related to the head motor. Oh no, look at that. It's belt driven. Never lifted that up before. Belt driven from that motor there. That's pretty interesting. So that there's a loading motor for the mechanism. For all that stuff. And there's loading rings there. So it wraps right around like a beta machine. Interesting piece of stuff. Perhaps we'll take apart completely one of the machines that this comes out of because I have four or five more of these machines. So perhaps we'll take one apart completely on a video and have a look at it since it's quite an interesting and very compact machine. Next we have a Panasonic equivalent to that better SP portable. This is an M2 machine, so it uses tapes like this. Which this is like the better cam. This is the small version of the tapes and then there's a larger versions which go in the big machines for editing. The arrangement's fairly similar to what the better cam machine looks like. Except everything's over the other side. Oh, the head audio type heads over here, in this case they're over here and the pinch rollers uh, in there goes up to there in this case the pinch roller is on the loading ring and comes around and ends up over here where capstan is a race head up there, loading motor that, that's the capstan motor there which also drives some other things uh, so that, that ribbon there, so this ribbon here is going to a brushless motor in there for the supply reel, probably gives good control for the tape tension and the take up reel is, which has a, a really small spindle compared to the other one, which is unusual. It's because in the bigger tapes it needs to miss the bigger reel in the full size tapes. 20 minute tapes, that's all you can fit in these small ones. The speed's quite fast and the video is recorded in component form in the same manner that it is for Betacam SP. Interesting mechanism. 
So the end sensor LED is way over that side, although that's more or less centered in the bigger cassette tapes. Here is a full-sized M2 mechanism. So this is capable of accepting the small cassette and put it inside into the side or you can put the full size ones into this and it deals with that by having a the two main uh, reels and then this retractable coming up a retractable third reel for the small cassettes so it fits on there and you can see how it just manages to miss the the one for the full size tapes. So this is quite a big mechanism to allow for this to retract. The other way this stuff's done, which is seen in the full size better cam machines, is the reels move on tracks diagonal so they can go in for this and out for the bigger cassettes. At maximum reach, so when it detects the small tape, this will wind up to meet it. So this mechanism is very interesting with a lot of moving parts during the loading process. This ring here rotates around and drags the tape out all the way around and then these various rollers and levers bring it to different positions and then finally the, the, the pinch roller ends up back over here in line with the capstan and that pushes it in. Uh, this one has auto track following so the heads on the drum are mounted on little piezo devices pretty sure that's how they will do it on this one that allows them to be tilted when a high voltage is applied which comes through this through these slip rings here there's a high voltage power supply for driving that and that allows it allows a clear image during different speed playback various other roller things there which has a little optical interrupter, two optical sensors, so it'll be like an incremental encoder. There's a little hall sensor there and a magnet in that to swing into it. Common fault in these M2 machines that I've found, it also happens in the better cab machines on a lever like this. The shaft that it's in gets really stiff and then it will get stuck like that and won't unload and then you end up chewing up your tape. So again, it's got a brushless motor for the capstan and for the head, the loading motors there. And then it's got two brushless motors for the reels. I think we'll do a separate video at some point on the M2 machines and take a look at some running and study this mechanism a bit more closely. Since it is unusual and you don't see it so much these days. Well, you haven't seen it so much for the last 20 years. So we've got a National or Panasonic consumer uh, VHS mechanisms from NV370. Very standard mechanism with the idler there. The capstan drives it. Pinch roller up there on that side. So the capstan goes up through this hole. So it's on the inside of the tape. Head drum there. Only standard heads. Erase and audio and control head. They put a voltage regulator in there to keep the head drum slightly warm to avoid condensation forming on it. On the bottom, you see the mode switch, the capstan loading motor there, using that wheel. Pretty good, been around a long time. And we've got a more professional version, which is, this one's still VHS, but it adds hi-fi sound. So there's light bulbs there and there's a mirror which flicks down so that when you look through the front you can see uh, the reels so you can see what how much tape is this is older I think yeah quite a bit older but otherwise fairly similar design idler there there's hall sensors under the reels so it can detect them turning back tension band erase protection switch or right protection switch. Same deal with a brushless motor there. DC motor running the reels, so it's independent. Probably allows better things for editing. There's the loading motor, and it's got this arrangement of gears 
to bring it over there to the mechanism. Not sure why that's happening. And the head motor will be under there. Let's take a look at it. There you go, so the magnet around there and the stator there. Pretty interesting. Consumer portable VCR mechanism. Fairly similar to the other one we just looked at. Again, National Panasonic brand. Uh, the mechanism is not on here anymore. This is what we were looking at in a previous video when all the circuit boards were still attached to it. And this one has got a DC motor there for the cat stand with a belt driven. And that also drives something over here. And then that same arrangement for the loading. So I think this is a pretty similar mechanism other than this being different. Might be built on the same cast chassis. You see, it has one of the common, most common problems with this mechanism that the back tension band felt piece loses its glue and falls off. Oh, it slides out, disappears, and then you get no back tension, and the tape ends up getting slack around the head, and then the picture goes bad, and you also lose audio. That's something to watch for. Slightly newer mechanism from the same range of machines National Panasonic portable VCR few changes the idler and thing driven off the cap stand is different brushless motor this time loading motor here different loading mechanism some other type of um, VHS portable mechanism now, I'm not sure what uh, manufacturer this came out of, but it is quite different. The tape is mounted quite over, which makes it compact. So everything's driven by cogs, so you don't have any issues of belt slipping, which is a very good thing. Although, when you look on the other side, you find the capstan is belt driven, and that's belt driven. Even though it looks like there's gears on this side doing the whole thing. There must be several operating modes depending on play or fast forward rewind. It uses the small type of head. So it has more heads on it and it spins twice as fast. And then there's head switching so it passes off from one head to another one to complete a track. Instead of one head doing the whole track across the tape, it switches halfway through. A cunning thing they came up with to make the mechanism smaller. Interesting. Here's a National Panasonic version of that using the smaller head. Here it is, still built into a machine, which the camera section goes there. This works as is as a standalone VCR. There's an adapter for allowing you to get a video input rather than from the camera. We'll do a separate discussion about this machine and the other models in the series. But I don't have all of them unfortunately. I have a couple of them, but not all of the ones that I wanted. So stripped down to the barest part, the small head, cap stand here with a DC with a brushless motor and then belt driven over to the idler for the reels. Fairly simplified, I think. There's a loading motor there, and that moves a few things around. And there's a sliding part through there with the mode switch there. Here are VHSC. So they took all this stuff and then made a smaller version of the cassette where you had only one reel accessible, but the other one is through this gear and it allowed it to retain compatibility with full-size VHS using a cassette adapter which had the other reel in it and just a little gear which goes onto there. So in the mechanism you can see there's the little take-up gear which engages with that and the supply reel there and that same small-sized head. So it retains full interoperability with the standard VHS machines and tapes. The small tapes fit in there, but they also fit in the full-size machines. Quite a cunning thing. And here's another v VHSC machine. The JVC one. Don't know about this, it's probably a Panasonic. It looks like it is. It looks like that's some of their chips with the M logo on them. So that's what a JVC one looks like. 
There's the head. It's got a little cleaning wheel thing on it to help keep the heads from clogging. I think the dew sensor is on that flex there. It comes off the audio control head. Detecting condensation. The resistance will change depending on the humidity. The loading motor there. There'll be a whole bunch of stuff going on under that board. The loading motor is under there on this model. And a whole bunch of stuff going on under there. It looks like the mode switch there. And we got some 8mm, which use these 8mm Video 8 cassettes, which are similar but thinner to the VHS machines. And these are their own standard, not compatible with any other thing, with any other tape formats. And here's two mechanisms. This one's got lots of stuff going on in there. And then motor drivers and things on the bottom. Not sure what brand this is. And another one. You can see all the mechanism there. It's pretty involved. We've got two different belts there for transferring the drive down here for the reels. Loading motor up there. I think it's got a little chip or die on board type chip for the motor driver. Soldered directly onto the back of the motor. And it looks like the RF amplifier for the video heads right there. Oh, little double row connector. Uh, I think this is soldered shut. Chips there. And the last one, lucky last, we have a mini DV that uses quite small tapes here compared to the 8mm tapes. Quite a bit smaller. And everything is microscopic in this and it's difficult to work on. You can see very small video head there. I feel like this is in the threaded position. No, it probably doesn't have a choice because it will unthread when it ejects the tape. I think that's how that will work. These are delicate and temperamental. Very good. That's a brief look at some VCR tape mechanisms.